Hey everyone, it's Stephanie Higgs, Little Miss Gis Gifted over on Instagram. I wanted to start this morning by sharing with you a differentiated math schedule that I think could be a real game changer for you and your students. Now, you can use a visual predictable schedule like this in any subject, but today I'm going to show you how that could look in your math class. So we'll start today. Um, my district uses Go Math, so that's the example that I'm using today, but truly this could be customized um, with the tools that you have access to in your building and in your district. So the first step to a differentiated math schedule is thinking about an informal version of pre-testing. So this is a quick, super simple way to ensure that you're kind of buying back time for your advanced or your gifted learners. The way that you do that is simply through something called the most difficult five. What I mean by that is students can stay with the class for the first two problems of any lesson. That's going to ensure they're building classroom community. That's going to ensure that they do have some background and content knowledge on the new skill that you're teaching. But after a couple problems, if they're feeling comfortable with the daily lesson, either because they're a quick learner or perhaps because they have some previous knowledge, you can go ahead and let those students move to a schedule like this, starting with the most difficult five. What that means is you would pre-select the five hardest problems from the daily lesson and students would go ahead and complete those while you were continuing to provide additional instruction with other students in the class. So students would start here by completing the five most challenging problems for any given day. If they're doing that and they have no problems, they're going to get to go ahead and move through some other differentiation components. Now, again, if you are a Go Math teacher, um, then you could move to a piece that they have that's an enrichment page. So that's going to extend that grade level skill and provide some additional depth. I also have teachers who take this piece out of the visual schedule and they send it as homework just to ensure that there's some consistency there and that parents are also able to see some of the enrichment opportunities that their child is accessing during the school day. Another piece, again, if you have Go Math, um, that I recently found out about. So I would encourage you, um, if you have a math program and you're not sure if they offer something like this, either you or perhaps an instructional coach um, for your math department could reach out to your publishing company to see if there are um, options like this for you. I actually learned this um, my second year in the position from a classroom teacher who had kind of found out from one other person, and I was able to, sh to share this far and wide, but it's not commonly known. So I definitely encourage you, even if you think, oh, I'm not sure if my you know program has something like that, reach out and see, because this has been such a game changer for us. So if you are someone who's using Go Math, we have something called Personal Math Trainer, and many of our teachers are familiar with that. However, based on just a couple of extra click paths, you can assign an enrichment option at the end of that daily personal math trainer, which is an online component and a digital um, ed tech tool that you can add to the end of a math lesson. But there's an enrichment option there. And based on the student accuracy with a grade level lesson, they're also able to potentially um, unwrap or, or extend that lesson with some additional challenges there. So all three of these first pieces um, came from our district curriculum with Go Math. So we're first of all starting with just the, the daily instruction and then moving to just solving some of those more challenging problems. That's going to buy back some time for your advanced and your gifted learners. And then again, these were pieces that are actually provided by our math curriculum. So I would definitely encourage you to reach out and see if something like this is also available to you. In addition to that, I worked really closely to collaborate with our math coach, and we came up with what we call a correlation chart. So we thought about a few places that it would naturally make sense to go from our curriculum and go math to the next grade level. Now, that could provide a challenge if we were constantly pulling pages from that next grade level because then when that student does, you know, attend the next grade level, oh, I've already seen this page last year. So what we encouraged was that we wouldn't necessarily move to just the next page and the next workbook in the additional grade level, that we would dig a little bit deeper through some of those digital components. So not necessarily assigning the textbook page for the next grade level but assigning just some of the pieces through the computer. So again, if you're a Go Math person, um, that would look like personal math trainer for the next grade level. So we created a curriculum um, correlation chart between every grade level and the following grade level where it would naturally make sense to accelerate that content. If you are a Go Math person and this is something that would interest you, I'd be happy to share it with you. You can email me littlemissgiftedteacher at gmail.com and I would be super happy to share this with you. You could vet it to make sure that this is going to be appropriate for you 
your students. Um, but that was kind of where we landed was that we would love to accelerate content in really specific strategized places to the next grade level. But we didn't want to cause confusion when students got to that grade level. They've already done that textbook page. So for us, it looked like we're going to align it and correlate it, but we're not going to look at the textbook. We're going to look at a digital enrichment component. So I'd be super happy to share this with you if that's something that interests you. Now, let's look at that last column. So this last column is where you have some freedom and flexibility to incorporate any of your favorite math challenges and math puzzles. So I wanted to just share a couple of my favorites. So first, you'll see that we have fast fact practice a couple of times a week, and both of these are free. So if your students are in anything from kindergarten through fourth or even fifth grade, and they still need some daily fact fluency practice, I have a couple of great sites there that I would love to show you. The first is Mensa for Kids. So you already probably know about Mensa. It's a great resource for our gifted students. And they have a section called Games with a few free um, opportunities. So there is a game for each of the division, or I'm sorry, each of the um, four fact fluency operations. And so what I love about these games is it actually is going to give the operation to students in the reverse order that they typically receive that. So instead of giving them the problem, like you see here on the screen, four plus two, it's actually going to give them the sum of six. And they're going to have to find the corresponding UFO that's going to have a problem where the solution is an answer of six. So that's just a great way to kind of flip that thinking for our advanced learners. They're certainly ready for that. It's a different format than they typically receive that in, and they're having to think much more quickly because they're solving many problems to find the one that has the correct sum. So they have that for each of the four basic operations. We've got demolition division, meter multiplication, and then we have minus mission down here. Again, for your older students, they even go into some fun with ratios, but we could definitely find some pieces there that could be a great free addition to that visual math schedule. On top of that, another fact fluency piece would be my favorite fruit splat. Again, it's offered for each of the four basic operations, but what this one does is they have levels. They can choose if they want it to be timed or untimed, and for each of the levels, it's going to give them, again, a sum um, or a product or the answer to the equation, and students are going to have to find a corresponding fact, and then they get to splat that fruit. And so they love that. It's so much fun. This could also be done whole group. Um, if you wanted to pull this up on like a smart board at the end of the day during dismissal, it kind of keeps everybody occupied and they get to take turns passing the pen and splatting the fruit. So lots of places you could use this, but it would definitely fit well in a differentiated schedule. Another option would be something like Tangy Tuesday and Wordy Wednesday Packs. If that's not something you're familiar with, um, you can go to tangmath.com slash puzzles and you can download some free sample packs to see if this could be a good fit for you and your learners. These are available in every grade from kindergarten through fifth grade. And each pack includes um, typically around four puzzles that students can solve. Our high achieving students love these types of number puzzles. So Tangy Tuesday is great because students don't have to be advanced readers to be able to solve especially in some of our primary grades, students have a really well-developed number sense, but their reading may not be quite on that same level. So we can be challenged to find good, independent, challenging math work for them where they don't also have to be an advanced reader. Tangy Tuesday is perfect for that because it is predictable. It's consistent. Once you've taught them the four puzzle formats, that's going to look consistent week by week, and it doesn't involve reading. So they can solve those without you um, being right there beside them. You can check in when you are available. Wordy Wednesday is going to include word problems. So that's still going to be great to advance the reading skills of those friends. So um, those are two great options. Again, they are a paid option. However, it's pretty affordable. Um, I know some of us too, it's that point in the year, if you were given any classroom money by your state or organization, then you might be trying to spend those last few classroom bucks. This could be a great resource for you as well. Again, always start with those free sample packs to see how your kids respond and if that could be a good fit for you. Another piece you might consider adding in are what's called Marcy Cook math puzzles. These are phenomenal. If you just search Marcy Cook tile packets or tile puzzles, these will pop right up for you. If not, I'd be happy to share with you if you wanted to email me. But what these puzzles are is students are given task cards and they have the numbers zero through nine over here in these blue tiles. These tiles are movable. So those really help our students kind of self check um, again, they don't involve much reading. And so students are able to move these tiles to try to solve the puzzles. And then they self-correct because if you've only got a four left and that's not going to fit in your last puzzle, uh-oh, we've got to go back and do some rethinking there. So these puzzles are phenomenal. I can't recommend them highly enough. They're really cost effective too. So for 10 to $15, you'll get a set of 20 to 30 puzzles um, for one specific skill. And Marcy Cook Math has tons of different skills. My students love these. If your students have access to technology, you could put these in a shared space like a Google Classroom. 
However, if you don't have that type of access to technology, you could also download the digital copies and print those out for your students. Um, additionally, she will sell packs of tiles that are printed on cardstock and those can be mailed to you as well. So lots of different options depending on what types of resources are available to you and your students. But just wanted to peek back at that one more time. A differentiated math schedule like this could be just the solution you and your high achieving or gifted learners have been looking for. I would be happy to share this one with you or collaborate to help you pick the best resources for your own. If you just wanted to email me, littlemissgiftedteacher at gmail.com, I would be happy to do that. And I would love to see you over on Instagram at littlemissgifted. If you come follow today, I'm doing a special Valentine's Day giveaway. So I'd love to see you there. Thanks so much for your interest and engagement. Let me know how I can help you. Have a great day.